Let's go to Paris now and speak to Bernard Henri Levy. He's a French writer and philosopher. He has just come back from a trip to Ukraine and joins me now live from Paris. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Henri Levy, for joining us here on the program. You were just listening there to Igor Mostovoy, one of the talented opera singers uh, of Mariupol, looking at that devastated theater which was destroyed with, with uh, women and children who were taking shelter uh, in the bunker there. I mean, when you see those sorts of images, having just come back and spent uh, a fair bit of time in U Ukraine yourself uh, since this war began. What goes through your mind? The first thing coming to my mind is that I am heartbroken when I see these images of ruins of uh, entire areas of Mariupol where nothing is left. It breaks my heart. I saw that myself in other areas of Ukraine all the northwest of Kiev, Borodienka, Andreevka, Gostomel, I saw the same sort of um, scenery, same situation. Entire village destroy, destroyed, uh, uh, bunches of, of ruins, people in the middle killed, abandoned, lost in the middle of the rubble. Um, it, it is really heartbreaking. I saw many wars in my life. I reported some of them since 50 years. I must say that I very seldom saw such a savagery by a regular army, which is supposed to be the Russian army. Where I the look thing which yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we were just looking at those images of you uh, in, in Ukraine most recently. But I just want to take you back to 2014 when you were in the Maidan. You you addressed uh, many of the, the protesters who were there. You described Ukraine as the beating heart of, of Europe and that Ukraine gave Europe substance, that the fate of Europe was playing out uh, in Ukraine. Uh, as I said, you've, you've made several trips there since this war began. Uh, do you feel that perhaps the world wasn't listening to some of those things that you had said at the time? What is true is that since 2014, I, I try to say two things. Number one, that Ukraine is Europe. And even more, that the values of Europe, the spirit of Europe, is probably nowhere as much incarnated as in Ukraine, number one. And number two, the other thing which I stay nonstop is that Putin will try to get rid of what is for him a nightmare. The very existence of Ukraine, the very existence of a democratic dream for and the practice of democracy in Ukraine for him is a nightmare. And since 2014, I try to say in France, in UK, in America, that the worst will happen, that Russia will not only arm wrestle diplomatically, that at a point the disaster could happen. Alas, I prove now to be right. Uh, and I. Yeah. But, 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 you know, we're hearing today from, from the U.S. president or, or in the last 24 hours him describing the situation in Ukraine as genocide. Uh, president Macron, your president, has said we need to be careful with this word. I just want to get your opinion on why it's so difficult to define the term genocide. We have to be very careful uh, with names, of course, with words. And um, when you name uh, wrongly the things, it adds to the, to the evil of the world, as a famous French writer said. What makes no doubt is that there is um, uh, war crimes and crimes against humanity in an extent which has never been seen in Europe since 75 years. This is sure. Another thing which is sure is that Biden says good things now, no doubt. And when he called Putin a butcher, he was completely right. He was more than right when he called 
Okay, we have Mr. Bernard Henri Levy, uh, the French writer and philosopher, joining us again uh, here on the program. We were just speaking to him a few moments ago about the trip that he made to Ukraine. Uh, he joins me from Paris. Thank you very much for joining us again, uh, Bernard, uh, Sorry, here on yeah. the program. We appreciate it. I just want to pick up on uh, where we left off uh, on the situation in uh, Ukraine. Um, President Macron has described uh, the two sides as, as brothers. He said that the Russians and the Ukrainians are brothers. Others, and he's reluctant uh, to, to uh, put the term genocide on, on what's happened. But given what you've seen and the brutality that's taken place, do you think that there can be healing, that the two sides can come together someday? They were brothers, undoubtedly. And that's why the, that's why the Ukrainians don't understand this war. They were so astonished, so mesmerized by this attack, this invasion. They literally could not believe it because really there is, uh, <laughs> they are brothers. Now the wounds will be bleeding for very, very long. What happened in Ukraine is um, unforgivable and unforgettable, certainly, and probably unforgivable. The women ra raped, the children tortured, uh, grenades and rockets in the caves when the people of the village have been uh, parked, all of that, uh, entire villages uh, uh, destroyed and, and flat under missile and under bombs, I don't know how the Ukrainians will be able to, to, for, to forgive that. It's very difficult. At this moment, I cannot, I cannot conceive even uh, a forgiveness. Are you surprised uh, by, by the solidarity of the Ukrainian people, the unity? Because, of course, initially there was shock uh, by the invasion, uh, but then they mobilized quite quickly. They came together quite quickly as a nation. They are very brave. This is true. And um, uh, Putin was the first surprised. He probably believe, he believed that Ukraine did not exist. He believed that Ukrainians were corrupted, materialist. Uh, of course, he thought neo-Nazis and so on and so on. And he found in front of him a brave, valiant, proud and heroic people. So he was the first surprised. As for myself, I'm not so surprised. No, not so much, because I was on the ground in Donbass already in 2020. I was on the Maidan. I had the great honor to be to speak on Maidan. And I saw already that. I saw the people of Ukraine, right, left, former Cossack, former um, uh, Russian-speaking, Ukrainian-speaking, Jews, uh, of course, uh, all of them mixed in one uh, citizen people, democratic people, in a, in a sort of patriotic and, uh, and political unity. So for me, it is not a surprise. Do you, though, yeah. do you think that what we're seeing, though, uh, in Ukraine today could have been avoided? Uh, the, the world leaders, people could have done things differently because at every twist and turn, whether it was in 2008, uh, the invasion of Georgia, or, or uh, the, the invasion of, or the annexation of Crimea in 2014. Um, all of these things that happened, the world was silent in many ways, didn't respond uh, to Vladimir Putin, or misread or misunderstood his ambitions. Of course, it could have been avoided. In 2008, um, some intellectuals in UK, in France, myself with my pal Andre Glucksmann, we asked for the entry of Ukraine in NATO. And it was refused, as you know, by President Sarkozy, by Chancellor Merkel, and by all of Europe and by America. Number one, uh, first time it could be avoided. 2014, it was obvious that Putin was um, enemy till blood, till death of the Ukrainian people, we should have embraced this democratic movement. We should have opened our arms to these ladies and gentlemen who are ready to die for our flag. Because on the Maidan, 100 young uh, uh, Ukrainians died with the flag of Europe in their arms. And number three, two months ago, four months ago in December, CIA um, uh, issued 
correct, accurate prospects of all that was going to happen and which happened. Why did they act as if they were the CIA, American government, as if they were a press agency? They just released communique saying this and that will happen and they didn't do anything. And Biden, this is what I said, what I, what I was saying when we were interrupted. Today, Biden speaks well, butcher and so on. December, January, he, he did not say anything. And he did as if he was giving a green light to Vladimir Putin in January till February, till the middle of February. So there is many opportunities and windows of opportunity which we missed, us, Europe and the West, in, uh, and which could have avoided this carnage. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Levy, we've got one minute left on the program. I want to quickly ask you about the, the upcoming French elections. Um, how do you think this is going to pan out and what's happened uh, to the left of the country? If you can, in, in, in a minute. The real problem is what would happen if the fascist, uh, if, if a fascist government took over in, uh, in two weeks. If Marine Le Pen was elected, this would be the real disaster. And I am today very worried about that. It is five minutes to midnight for France before going to the abyss. So my hope is that there will be an unconditional vote of all the Democrats in my country, Republicans and Democrats, for Emmanuel Macron. If not, it will be a real disaster in the heart of Europe. OK, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, as Thank always, you. Bernard, for Thank joining us here on the programme.